So today we're going to do something a little different, especially for those of you who have been with me throughout this entire class series. We are going to put our um, our lessons to action. We are going to make our energy magnificent and then send it out to those who are feeling deplete. Um, and I am going to encourage us to send it to our brothers and sisters who are, um, you know, fighting for the Black Lives Matter movement, because that's where all of our energy needs to be right now. Um, but if you feel your energy drawn elsewhere, it's okay to send more energy. Uh, it will be like if you have someone you love who is ill or someone you love who you just want to send them love, you can also send to that. But I would like all of us, and you'll feel the difference between our unified energy going to the people who are battling right now for full human recognition of all people uh, versus your energy that will also be diverted out to someone where it's a very personal one-on-one -on -one connection. You will feel that. And with the work we've been doing, and for those of you, if it's your first time, that's okay. Just tag along and coast on our energy. So you will feel the difference of the energy streams, but you'll see how they're both extremely valid. And it is absolutely possible to do both at the same time here. Hold on, I feel like, wait, I'm gonna move. It's, this is a rough time of day for me to do a live stream on this porch, but with the birds singing, I can't resist it. However, the sun is like, right in my eyes, no matter what I do. So some of you may say like, or wonder, or most of you are like, Benita, come on, don't like micro explain to us why, if we're working on harness your inner fire, building your inner energy centers, why are we connecting to the Black Lives Matter? Um, and also why are we saying Black Lives Matter when all lives matter? when someone is calling out for help you reach out and you help them uh as um uh, a friend of mine explained you're sitting in your home in your suburban neighborhood and someone comes pounding at your door help help we need help your neighbor across the street their house has caught fire call 911 call the ambulance you know turn on your fire hose let's help them and you say but all houses matter. Why, why are you caring only about the one house when every house in this neighborhood is equally important? And they're like, because this house is burning up and they're screaming, please help us, help us. I'm like, oh, so are you saying you don't care about the other houses? That's, I mean, that's what, when you say all lives matter or my life matters or I worked really hard to get what I have. How dare you say that I have white privilege? Like what you are is the person who refuses to help their neighbor who's screaming. And, and I'm just gonna rant a little bit about this and we're gonna get in the exercise because you'll see where um, this is part of the lesson. This is part of how it fits in. So how does helping Black Lives Matter help the other community that you're already concerned with. And here's the thing, like um, those of you who know me know that I have for a long time, decades, been really involved with uh, uh, the human rights of the autism and spectrum and special needs community. Um, <coughs> so I'm gonna tell you something. And, now, I have not fact-checked this in the last couple of years, so I'm going on data that is over two years old. But as of over two years ago, the um, state of Virginia, where I live, had the highest false arrest rate 
and the highest arrest rate of special needs youth. Over three times higher than the next two highest states, which were New Jersey and North Carolina. Virginia is not a private prison state. However, um, while they're government run, uh, and again, all of my data is over two years old, but I really don't think it's changed that much. <laughs> um, while they're uh, government run, all of the services are private um, that support everything, you know, the cleaning, the, you know, et cetera, the food, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've been in juvenile detention facilities. Uh, if you want to know what a concentration camp looks like, go to a juvenile detention facility here in Virginia, and you will see, like, the only thing they're missing is the gas chambers, but it's um, the ones that I visited, I wouldn't send my worst enemy to. So, get really emotional about it. Virginia has the highest rate of arrest of special needs youth in the country, far and away. Why is that? Because if you fill your juvenile detention facility with and prisons with special needs youth, especially innocent ones, they're more likely to like introvert and develop like extreme mental health issues that are self-destructive, not gang violent, community destructive, you know, flipping out attitude. It's very easy to put them in solitary confinement and leave them alone. So here's the thing, I've seen innocent youth. The only thing they're guilty of is having like Down syndrome or autism or a tick disorder with, you know, or, you know, things where like, there is no law violation thrown into juvenile detention on not only made up charges, sometimes the police here in Virginia don't even make a case file, like literally no case file, no paperwork trail or a one page case file, which is the arrest report, which is made up charges, completely false, like no, not even blaming the wrong person, no crime occurred, okay? They will put these kids in jail for up to lifetime sentences, up to, I've heard 32 years to life, which means if you arrest, like even if it's a three year sentence, if you arrest someone when they're 17, within a year, they're moved to a regular jail. When they get out of jail or juvenile detention, there are certain expectations put on them. They're not allowed to associate with anyone who has any kind of criminal record. They're not allowed out after curfew time, which is like after 6 p.m., something, you know, it's ridiculous. Um, so there's no way living their life, especially if they come from, you know, a low income neighborhood where a lot of people are arrested, there's no way they will not violate this just by their existence on the planet. There's no way to not violate it. Um, so they get arrested and put in jail for life at much stricter situations because they did parole violation. I have seen special needs youth in and out of juvenile detention and then in jail for life when they've literally never committed an actual crime beyond bureaucratic, let's see what we can stick on them. So I fight for these kids. And as you know, I fought to the detriment of my family. Here's the other thing, in the state of Virginia, the police can shoot you without any cause and they do not have to file paperwork. And again, that's a, two years ago. And there are cases reported. I have friends who have children and fathers, family members who have been shot by the police for literally no reason. In Virginia, you cannot sue the police. They can do whatever the hell they want. You have no legal repercussion. 
if I lived in any other state, the things they did to my family, I would be like a multi-millionaire years ago. In Virginia, nothing. Um, so why is it when I fight for special needs youth to be like free and cared for, why do I say, I tell you all of us in the special needs community, we're saying Black Lives Matter. We're putting our needs on the side and we're saying Black Lives Matter. Here's the thing, the majority of special needs youth who are arrested are young men of color. There was a case of a, I think he was 17 years old when he was arrested. I forget if it was low functioning autism or Down syndrome. And this was um, like six years ago, I think. Young man loved to read, loved to read. Oh my God, he lived with his grandmother, loved to read. He loved reading so much, he would go to the library and sit on the library steps with the books that he was returning, waiting for the library to open. Like he'd show up early so that when they opened, he could hand them his books, be there when they check them in, and then go and check out more books. This was his greatest joy in life until some white lady called the police and said, there's a black thug in our library and he's dealing drugs. He's on the streets right now, you can arrest him. He's dealing drugs in front of the library. This young man was arrested and I believe he's still in jail. He's gonna be in jail for life, despite everything that we've done to try to get him out. So when you set aside your personal all lives matter or you know this group don't forget this group understand when everyone rallies together and says right now we need to stand as one and say black lives matter trust me that will filter back to everyone everything you care about everyone you care about will benefit from this you know if you are a heart-centered person um Later today, Uma, uh, Bebat, Alexandra, and I are going to do a little sketch based on um, some, uh, we're just gonna read some Facebook stuff from people who are not heart-centered. And hopefully we will uh, diffuse it by adding comical, you know, farcical element to something that's quite horrific. But if you are a heart-centered person, put your heart where Black Lives Matter, and trust me, it will come back and help everyone. And as we all know, a strong economy will not wipe out racism. <laughs> We've had strong economies before. It's like Trump's just trying to divert everyone who's like hurting for money going, oh, oh, okay, if I focus on the economy, you're like, uh, and as hopefully everyone understands, the COVID-19 numbers are going back up. So everyone going back to work, we're like, oh good, the economy is great again. The numbers are down. You know that's gonna be reversing in the next month or so. Uh, the numbers are already climbing back up. All right, so now that I've like thoroughly depressed everyone, what are we gonna do about this? What are we gonna do? You guys, we have been working together now for like two months on how to build strong energetic structures. And even if you haven't been here for the whole class series, I put in the description the link, go to my website, click online classes, the harness your inner fire videos, they are all there for free. Sign up for the course, it's free, along with the Wednesday night learn to receive messages and my cord cutting. And I'm adding more videos, more videos. I have a lot more that I'm trying to get in there. It's just like time constraints. Ah, there's only so much time bending can do before it snaps back and you have to make up for the time you lost. So, um, so go to my website and all the videos, all the meditations are there and there's more being added every day. So you guys, I am so proud of you. For two months now, we have been meeting, we've been working, we've been building our energy structure. I hope you are feeling like how powerful you are now and how much 
in structural integrity you have and how like when you go on you know uh meditations led by other people how you're able to like have deeper resonance and maintain your awareness for more you know more and more and trust me it's a lifelong journey if you're going uh i've been here from the start and i'm not getting that it's coming it's coming you know because what we're doing is manifesting our more powerful selves and as you do that, everything that's blocking you from your power will show itself to you. And you're like, no, this is some element of myself I thought was behind me and here it is, I'm trying to be powerful and here's this like, you know, anxiety, fear, guilt, whatever, like right here, or like acknowledge it. Just like when I say when you have pain or pressure anywhere or any blocks, acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. Thank it for having been one with you all this time and give it permission to release. This energy is in your body. These memories are in your body because you're clinging to them for any of a variety of reasons, for self-protection, as a reminder never to do that again, for um, because you feel guilty or because you're hiding from it, there are so many reasons why we hold energy in the form of memories and emotions in our body. And this energy will either help with your energy flow and your emanation, or it will stop and interrupt it. If it's stopping and interrupting, get to know it and give it permission to leave. It's ready to, if it's calling to you, hey, 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 what about me? Guilt, remorse, whatever. It's trying to get your attention so it can leave your body, you know, and I'm saying with this technique, you don't really need years of therapy and confronting and rescuing yourself and all of that. It is as simple as giving it permission to leave your body with gratitude for the connection you share. And it may come back because it's used to that. It's comfortable or you may pull it back. But just keep, every time it shows up, you'll notice it's like a little less, a little less until it's gone. Um, or it may be other shades of it, like you're carrying a lot of remorse or a lot of anxiety. So it's like little aspects of it leaving a bit at a time. Um, now, I'm not saying this is the only technique. This is a technique, and it's the technique that is associated with this harness your inner fire process. If other techniques are working for you, you are welcome to use them as well. Um, some people find combining multiple techniques is what really works for them. That's perfect. Go for it. Um, oh, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad, Kat, that you're able to hear your guides with greater clarity. Yes. See, this is what it comes to. I cannot wait till the day comes when each and every one of you is like the same as me. I mean, your own version of being able to open up and receive what you need and send energy where you need and you never, ever, ever again need to go see someone like me for a private session unless it's more of a, hey, let's do an exchange or, you know, as peers with each other. That is, I'm looking forward to that day coming. Um, and then we will all stand side by side and the energy flowing from us to the planet will be palpable. <laughs> so for today, because part of being a spiritual healer, a spiritual leader, a spiritual person is that we all rise up together. For today, we are gonna connect together as peers. No matter how you think of yourself, for the next you know, half hour, we are peers, we are one. And we will send Ho'opono Pono and healing love out to the black community and the black and brown community, out to everyone who is discriminated against because of the skin color, okay? Um, so, if you're a white person, like if like me, you're like, but 
I'm a, like, I'm a Jewish Unitarian woman. Believe me, I've had plenty of discrimination in my life. However, today isn't about me. Even though you're all looking at me, today is about someone, someones who are asking for our love, our support, our compassion. And for those of you who do not know what Ho'oponopono is, Ho'o is like, we are one, and Ponopono is the pouring of love. And it is a Hawaiian kahuna magic, very powerful, very powerful. There are, you know, variations of this in every indigenous healing community. But um, this became, um, globally acknowledged when um, they used it in um, the criminal, the institutions for the criminally insane in Hawaii. And um, the, the head of it, the, the, it would practice Ho'oponopono on everyone. And they saw a magnificent transformation, like, beyond belief. So I recommend you look up Ho'oponopono plus uh, Hawaii Institute for Criminally Insane. You will get an amazing story and understand anything anyone else can do, you can do. It's just a matter of pure belief and flow. And um, Cicely, the police are awful. You know what? Uh, I got to say, after all I've been through, I like, oh, hate the police so much. Like every time I see them, I'm just like, ugh. However, that's a form of racism. There are good cops. And I was so happy to see like police kneeling before protesters. And I'm sorry, I got like an itch on my back. And that's, ugh. It's where my wings open up, the back of my heart chakra. <laughs> and it's like super itchy because I love you all so much. My heart chakra is opening. <laughs> Um, seeing police kneeling before protesters, uh, today I saw pictures of the police in front of the Martin Luther King Memorial standing in contemplation, you know, like normally, like, because I'm here in Virginia, oh, where it's a police state. I just, I hate the police so much. However, we cannot hate an entire group, especially when members of those group are purposefully standing up and saying, we are here for you. And you're seeing like, go through the headlines, you're seeing state after state, city after city are saying, we are changing our regulations so that the police are accountable. Chokeholds are no longer legal. Like, oh my God, when were they, why were they ever legal? But they're no longer legal. Police are going to be accountable for their actions. Like the bad apples are showing. And I, you know, and they should have done this obviously decades ago. But if they're doing it now, I need to look within myself and say, what do I need to heal within myself so that I no longer hate all police? and that I can send healing love and support to the police who are trying to change to become what they're supposed to be doing to serve and protect. So everyone, I know we all have a lot of healing in this matter, um, but if our friends of color are reaching out for connection then the rest of us, what right do we have to hold back um, at this moment? Okay, again, we'll have our moments to pick and choose, but at this moment, it is a time for unity. And, you know, um, Cecily, I got to tell you, um, it's going to be a hard one for me. So not only do I feel your pain, sister, I got a lot of work to do on myself to be able to do this. And... Um, you know, just remember, you cannot send love where you do not love. So if you're saying, but I hate the police and I just can't do it right now, then 
put that energy on the side and send love where you do love, you know, like we all know when, when you're like faking it, everyone feels it and it's ineffective. It's just, bleh. so connect where you can love support where you can support and see what happens as you go forward. All right. Um, and you know, if we feel challenged, good. That's how we grow and evolve. Okay. Oh, thank you, Leah. You know, you guys, I want to point out here, Leah, and um, she is an amazing artist. Like, if you're not yet her Facebook friend, friend her, because every day she posts the most beautiful artwork that she's making all the time. And she lives with, like, she has a little animal sanctuary in her home, and she's got birds. She is, like, the most pure, loving person. And... Um, if you want to feel good, connect with Leah. <laughs> Leah, I'm sorry to call you out like this, but oh my God, you know, you just always make me feel so good when I see your posts. And here's the thing, like, we have to pick and choose how we self-express. It's not like Leah's had an easy life. She's not sitting in a mansion with money flying at her. She, she is going through her life challenges and they're not any easier than anyone else's, but she is always choosing. Ooh, sorry, there's like, <laughs> I'm outdoors and little polony things are like landing on me. Uh, she is always choosing what is my best and highest way to be at this moment. And, um, you know, so I find this inspiring. Ugh! Okay, <laughs> I'm so twitchy. Okay, all right. So that that's great, Leah. And let's start the meditation. And um, oh my God, it's it's like all the fluffy pollen. It's flying off the trees right now and landing all over me. So we had all this rain. We had a huge thunderstorm all day and night yesterday, or or all evening and night. And now it's like hot and sultry and steam is rising up off everything and all the fluffy stuff is falling down. All right. So you guys, here's what I want you to do. Get yourself into your personal comfort of energy flow. Okay. Invite your root chakra to spread deep and wide and of invite your crown chakra to open high and wide. And invite all the energy to just flow through your body. We're gonna start with crown chakra flowing down. If you look up in your crown, you'll see your guardian angel is already there nestled in ensuring that only the most loving healing energy is flowing in from the highest state of divine light, love, beings. Flowing in through the top and airy, the light and airy top of your head, flowing down, filtering all through your mind. You'll see it even shining forward out of your eyes and your third eye. And as you breathe in and out, there's love. It may look like a golden glow or light pink or sparkly, just like light shining out of your head as though you were a marvelous superhero of the angelic, divine, cosmic love. If you feel any pain or pressure, Acknowledge it, thank it for being one with you, and give it permission to resolve itself. And invite this energy to flow down and fill your neck, fill your skull and your spine, flow down your arms, down out your hands and your fingers, flow down through your back, down into your chest, 
filling your entire heart center, all three of your heart chakras, the central chakra where energy flows, your physical heart that pumps blood and oxygen into your body is now filled with love, sending divine love to all of the cells and molecules of your being. And your cosmic heart on the right side of your chest filling with love. So all of your little hidden memories tucked away and ignored are lit up with divine love and love flows out to everywhere, everyone who is open to accept it. The energy flows down through your rib cage to your solar plexus chakra, your action chakra, just above your digestive system, so that every thought or action you take is now filled with love. Love is connected with every direction you look towards or step towards. And this beautiful, divine, angelic, cosmic energy flows down to your belly, your digestive tract, your intestines, on down to your womb, to your sacral chakra, the area where your gut instinct lives, where all of your beautiful creative inspiration is born. Your daydreams come to life, present themselves. Your guardian angel is most easily, can most easily connect with you, give you messages, warnings, gut instinct, guidance. This beautiful cosmic divine angelic love flows down to your hips, your buttocks, your root chakra and then flows down like a cone going down your legs and radiating outward deep into earth so that you are grounded and all of this magnificent energy is able to flow through you deep into earth. Spreading deep and wide where our beloved Pacamama, Gaia, Mother Earth, absorbs it, receives it, supports you with all of your magnificent efforts, and flows your energy magnified off to all of your Earth brothers and sisters, the nature, the crystals, our planet, the tree roots, the plants, the worms, the waterways. Just allow yourself to open and all of this energy is flowing through you. Anything this beautiful divine love touches within you, invite it to heal and energize. And invite this energy to flow in through the light and airy top of your head down through your mind, your mouth, your throat, your neck, your shoulders, down to your heart, where it just fills all three of your heart centers, flowing around and radiating in and out, just like becoming more and more in your hearts. And invite your hearts to just open so that all the energy is flowing before you and behind you, just opening with love. You may feel your shoulder blades opening. You may feel your chest opening and all the love is flowing through you and out. Invite your love, your heart to connect with all of us who are here together, whether we're live 
we're watching later, we are still connected. This energy continues and can only magnify. We are connecting and creating a mandala, a grid, a network of love. And where the love connects and intersects, many chakras are bursting into life. This mandala, the only thing it can do is expand and grow as each person connects. Feel this connection, feel it. And any time in the future that you want to connect with this energy, you are welcome to do so because it is here. We have birthed love and this love can only grow, can only expand. Feel this love between us with whatever senses awaken within you. Feel the love spreading forward. You may feel it in other directions behind you. You may feel like you have wings or just like bursts of flames of love behind you. You may feel like you're a volcano erupting with love or a geyser springing forward, bursting, love, love becoming its own living entity. Invite this love to become empowered love, pure, impassioned, empowered love. might breathe on it with that beautiful gold and pink sparkling energized breath from your crown and your third eye and your pineal gland chakras all activating and going forward. Invite your throat chakra to erupt open and send its self-representation energy to our heart mandala. Invite all your chakras to burst open and send their energy to this love mandala, this love network, to become fully empowered, sanctified by the purity of your essence, by the love of all that are flowing into you and through you and out. Invite all the highest beings that can connect with you through the frequency of love to flow in through your crown chakra and fill you and go out to this mandala. If the energy is overwhelming, invite your chakras to spread out so that you are even a tiny physical being in this huge tube of divine love. And it's still all directs in you and around you and through you out to our beautiful mandala of love. We invite this wonderful, globally empowered, brand new, pure, love network to reach out, send its tendrils of energy, its lines, its grid networks out to the Black Lives Matter, to every person who is marching in a peace protest, to every person who says, I care about this, to every person who says, I cannot be there in person, but I am there in heart and spirit. To every person who wants all of our brothers and sisters of color to be acknowledged and treated as free human beings standing beside everyone, all of us as one.
as one where simultaneously there is no color because we are all souls and there is resplendent color as we are a rainbow race of one. We are one and all our love is going to those who need it the most right now. As they feel our love, they are given opportunities to heal, to expand with love, to release non-love. They can do with it whatever they feel called to do because we are empowering them with our love to stand up, to be supported, We call to them, we are with you, brothers and sisters. We love, we love you. We thank you, we love you. Say this with me out loud or in your mind, we thank you. We love you, we thank you, 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 we love you. If you're speaking to individuals or to groups or to everyone, we invite everyone in our Black Lives Matter brothers and sisters to feed on this energy. Because as much as they consume, there is always more coming in. This love mandala only grows more resplendent as the energy flows. As the energy flows, the more it is consumed, twice, tenfold, a thousandfold is able to flow in to replenish and replace and continue flowing. As the more feed on it, the more open all the channels become and the more powerful, the greater our love mandala can grow and grow and grow to fill the world and feed all who are starving for love. Starting with our brothers and sisters who are calling out in the here and now Look at us, we matter, we are human beings. Stand beside us, so we do. We love you, we thank you. We love you, we thank you. We love you, we thank you. Think in your mind how grateful you are to the courageous people who are marching in peace, knowing what they are up against. Be grateful for their courage. Be grateful for their perseverance. Be grateful for them for channeling their understandable anger and darker emotions into action that will bring change so that all may be one. We thank you, we love you. And if you are our brothers and sisters of color here with us today, we thank you, we love you, just as you are saying, we thank you, we love you. Through love, 
there is only community, compassion, power, perseverance. Thank you. We love you. Feed on this love, whatever and however long, whatever purpose, however much, this is here for you. With love and gratitude. Okay. And everyone, you know what? It's time for us to return to space, but keep your hearts open if you want. Let this mandala and energy keep flowing. You can tap back into it whenever you like. You can keep it open as long as you like. Feast on the love while you are flowing with love. Reach out to your friends and say, I love you. For today, for now, for this time, if you see friends of color being disrespected in any way, especially on social media, say, I love you. I am here for you. Don't just say, oh my God, that's so dark and walk away. Go on social media posts and say, I love you. I am here for you. Even if you post that and then move on, put positive energy and support to friends who are there saying, is there anyone here who hears what I'm saying? I love you. I thank you. I am here for you. This is our mantra. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone has any comments, please feel welcome to share them. Even if your comments are criticisms of me, you're welcome to share them. And I will leave you with one statement, which is all the people I hear saying, I don't see color, I just see souls. And I notice it's only white people who say that. <laughs> um, mostly, I hate to say it, upper class white women. Um, I see souls. When I look at people, I see all their past lives with them wherever I go. If I am in a crowded room, I see a room full of people and the past lives that are with them. And I will tell you something, every person I see, I see them as a soul. I see their color. I see what clothing they're wearing. I see how they have their hair and I see what past lives are with them. I have never in my life seen a single person whom the past lives that are with them are exactly the same gender and color they are. So, if you're like someone going, oh, I just see souls. Yes, I see the souls and the souls have color and gender and I see what clothing they're wearing and they have stories to share. I'm sorry. I encourage everyone to see souls. 
I encourage every one of you to do past life regressions. I encourage every one of you to see the world the way I do or see the world the way you do expanded to your natural fullest vision. Because when you have a variety of colors and cultures and attitudes and beliefs, then you have a wealth of friends. So I thank you guys. And I will just put in a little plug tomorrow at 5 p.m. Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, Dr. Daryl, Uma, and I are going to have another one of our live streams. This time we will talk about how to evolve white fragility to fully connected human empowerment. And that will be 5 to 6 p.m. tomorrow on all three of our Facebook pages. I'll put a link there. Um, and those of you who um, join me when I channel the librarians of the Akashic Record, I want to apologize. This last week has been, you know, intense, and I've been in the frequency of like working in 3D world more. So I just haven't been open to channel them. Uh, we're moving the Saturday chat afternoon. So I, I can't do this and that Saturday. It's too much. We're moving it to Wednesday night. So instead of the learning to receive messages, I'm now channeling the librarians. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, Tiffany. I love you so much too. Thank you. And um, so Wednesday nights I channel the librarians and they are working. They're actually very excited because they're like, this is their time to teach us how to evolve humanity. So I'll put links here for both in the comments section. I wanna thank you, I wanna thank you, I wanna thank you. I thank you all so much, I thank you. And I love you. Have a wonderful day.